Yes, hi. Um, this is Peter Rossi back to talk about how to subset observations, create new variables, delete old variables, and create qualitative or categorical variables from continuous variables. So let's go back to the uh, flat panel television set, data set. So here I am uh, invoking it with the data command to allow me access to it. And you can see it shows me here, it's a data set again of 70 observations on five variables. Now suppose I wanted to, uh, to subset that, that the data set, namely to select either variables or observations or some subset of both. There's a couple of different ways to do that. First, I can simply use the indexing commands. So let's say, so flat panel TV is a 70 row by five column array, and I can refer to uh, rows and uh, columns explicitly. So let me do that, and I do that using the square bracket, not the open parentheses or curved brackets, but the square bracket. And the square bracket says, uh, consider subsets. And for example, I could type one colon five, which is the first five rows. One colon five just generates numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And then put a comma to say, I'm subsetting the rows and leave the second after the comma, the second argument, blank, meaning all columns, and it will simply print the first five rows of the flat panel television data set. I could also do that for the columns, of course, and say specify just the first, uh, the, the last two columns, for example, columns four and five, and that would just print the uh, type and model for those first five observations, okay? Now, for most data sets of any size, it's, when you subset the data set, you'll be doing this for a purpose. For example, considering a region or a time period or so on. So in other words, you want to subset the data by some variables within the data. And for that, um, R has a command called subset. What subset will do was you give it a, an expression saying something like, subset, I'd like to see all Samsung brands, all whenever the brand variable is equal to Samsung. Um, and it will pull out automatically all the rows for which the brand equals Samsung um, and create a new data set. So what I'm going to do, because I'm modifying an existing data set, is first let me create a copy. I'm going to call it DF of the flat panel television. Um, so this DF is a, you can see it over here in my workspace, DF. It's simply a copy of the flat panel television set data set. Now I can modify DF. I can erase things in DF. I can add columns to it and so on. I cannot do that to the flat panel TV set because that's part of the class data sets and it's reserved or, or protected against that so that no one can corrupt its copy. But now DF I could do anything to. So what I'm now going to do is going to say sub DF, which just means a subset of DF, equals subset is a function, therefore they're going to have to use parentheses, and I'm going to have to give it some arguments. Subset of what? Well, subset of DF. Um, and what are, and the next argument it wants is an expression of what they call an R, a logical expression to specify which, um, which uh, rows you want based on a variable. So the variable I want to use is called brand, capital B-R-A-N-D, and I only want brand equal Samsung. So in R you would say brand equal equal quote Samsung, and you have to spell it correctly, otherwise it won't find any of uh, any uh, rows. Um, and so what it's going to do now is look for all rows that satisfy the property, their brand variable equals Samsung. And there's something to note here. You'll notice the use of equal equal. This is what is called a comparison operator as opposed to an assignment operator. So if I said brand equals Samsung, it's trying to assign to the variable brand the value Samsung. We don't want to do that. We want to compare the values in brand to Samsung. So we ask, are they equal, equal Samsung? So that will only return the observations for, with Samsung, um, for brand equal Samsung. Okay, so now we have created a new data set. You can see over here, it's got 32 observations, the same five variables. So if I were to click on that and bring it up, you can see here it's the, it's the subset of DF where brand equals Samsung. Now you might say now brand is an irrelevant variable or redundant variable because I know that all observations in this new thing sub DF correspond to Samsung. So one, I might want to modify the subset command to select only those variables that are not brand. 
Okay, and there's a very nice and powerful way to do things like that in R. If you want everything not equal to something, just put a minus sign in front of it. So select equals minus capital brand, the name of the variable name, and that will now create a different version called subdf, which only has four variables in it. You can see it has only price, size, type, or technology, and model. Um, so that's removed the brand variable from it. So that's how they subset. And for example, you can put together logical expressions that involve more than one um, more than one comparison. So for example, if I wanted all um, observations for which brand equals Samsung and uh, type equals LED, I would I would put a ampersand, which means logical and, and type equal equal, don't forget the double equal signs, LED. Okay, and this will select those subset of those 32 observations with technology or type equal LED. So now we have only 20 observations, and they're all the LED models, all these Samsung LED models. You notice here that what this means is to, this both must be true. And a logical and means brand must be equal to Samsung and type must also be equal to LED, otherwise you're not going to be considered. You can use, there's also a logical or. So for example, if I wanted to, to do um, both Samsung and Panasonic brand values, so I would say brand uh, or Panasonic, I would say vertical bar, which means or brand equals equals Panasonic. Okay, and that would select all observations for which brand is either, either Samsung or Panasonic, so that'll be a, a much larger set. That's 49 observations. Okay, so we have all Panasonic and Samsung brands there. Okay, so that's a little bit about subsetting, and you can see you can do other things, like for example, if you had a continuous variable like age, or you would say subset only those observations for which the people are over 50, you would say age greater than 50, as a logical expression. Okay. Um, now, so, uh, many of you will want to create new variables, so, um, which are typically transformations of existing variables. So let's do that. So let's create a new variable and put it in df that is the log of price. Okay, so that's very easy to do. We'll say df dollar sign and whatever name we want to call the new variable, and I'm going to call it ln capital P-R-I-C-E, for natural log of price equals log of a df dollar sign price. So that's going to create a new variable in a df called log price. Okay, and now you can see if you go back up to df, df now contains six variables, and if I view it, you can see the last column has been appended, and that is the natural log of price. So 7.33 is the natural log of 1527. So there's that variable, and that's and if I want to, I can save df and retrieve it back in, load it back into my workspace, and continue working where I left off. Now, let's say that I wanted to remove that variable from my um, data, data frame because I no longer need it or I find it um, unappealing. So I can also do that by saying df dollar sign ln price equals, and uh, r has a very special um, uh, reserved word called null. It's all capitals N-U-L-L -L, and that actually is nothing. So if you just set it to equal nothing, now df is back to its original five variables, okay, where the, the log of price is absent. Okay, fine. there's one final um, thing I'd like to cover, which is how to take a continuous variable and create categories or bins out of it. So for example, I might want to take income and put it into uh, low income, medium income, high income. Here I'm going to do that with price. So let me create a new variable called price uh, cat, meaning categorical variable values of price or categorical version of price. And I'm going to cut what's called cut the um, price values by categories. And that there's a nice function for that called cut for cut. And what variable do I want to cut? df dollar sign price. And what are the breakpoints that or intervals that define the cuts? Well, my lowest value of price in the data set is, I don't know what it is, but certainly zero is lower than another. 
The next one would be 500. So the first category would be every price between zero, just greater than zero and 500. Then I'll go just greater than 500 or 501 to 1000. And then 1000 and plus epsilon or 1001 to the largest price, which I don't know, but I can just say max of DS dollar sign price. And that will create a new variable that is a categorical variable that takes on really um, uh, three values, less than 500, less than between 501 and 1000 and greater than 1000. Okay, so price cat, if you go over here, it says, now it's created a new variable called price cat. It says, a, what is it? It's a factor with 70 observations. What is a factor? A factor is a qualitative variable in R. And R understands that price is a something that classifies observations. That's the way they're thinking about it. Um, and if I look at the head of price cat, it's a little bit ugly because you can see the first observation is in the bin between one, uh, that's 1,000 to 4,050 and so on. So what you might want to do is assign to the level. So those are automatically generated labels for each of the values of the price cat variable. So I can assign any values I want by the levels command, price cat, and I give it a set of labels, the same number as there, there are three possible values for price cat. So let's call the labels, uh, again, it's a vector of um, the first, the lowest one I'm going to call low, then the middle one I'm going to call medium, and the highest one I'm going to call high. And what that'll do, and notice I had to put quotes around them because these are strings or names. So now if I look at the head of price cat, it'll be things like high, low, medium, and high. It could take on the on three possible values. So that's a very useful way to create a category from a continuous variable. Okay, so thanks for listening and continue with your quest to learn R.